Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today is a slightly different one, and if you want to skip ahead straight to the painting, I'll understand. There are timestamps down the bottom, but if you've got a minute or so, please stick around. I would appreciate it. So recently, uh, you may have seen a community post from me that uh, we had an unexpected bereavement in the family, and I took last week to, to hang out with the family and make sure that everything was sort of ticking over. Uh, but getting started again, painting, especially for something like the channel here, was kind of daunting. Um, it's just one of those things where you lose the momentum and getting started again is a bit of a, a pain. But um, I wanted to touch on an idea that I have mentioned a few times in videos, but never really tackled with a video of its own. And that is the idea of, well, comfort food. Uh, it's the only way I can think to name it. When you go ahead and you do something that you're familiar with, and it's an easy win. Now, I've mentioned easy wins all the time, and this here is one of them. Um, I took something that I know very well. Power armor is easy. I like white armor. And it still has a reputation for being a bit tricky, but maybe you like what's spinning around in front of us here. This Palatine has been in my collection for a while, crying out for paint. And I thought, you know, in order to get started and recording again, I'm going to do something that I've just wanted to do for myself for a while. So that's why, um, you know, I've already done Sacred Rose on the channel, but I'm going to show you a couple of different methods, uh, one or two things that have changed since the arrival of some new products on the scene. So you might find it interesting. Now, if you have stuck around for all that, thank you very much. <laughs> all of the paints for this one will be listed in the description below. Same as always, let's get started. So to start off with, you'll probably notice one of the things missing from this miniature is her head. And uh, rather than leave that off entirely, I have rather a macabre little display here. Uh, what I've done is to drill, you'll see, up under the neck joint there. And she's just sitting on a pen. She isn't glued in place or anything. Once she's painted, it'll be easy enough to pop that head off and just dab it in there with a little bit of glue. A uh, wee little dot of PVA will be plenty to hold that in place. Um, some folks wonder whether or not PVA is permanent. On a little join like this, which isn't going to be load-bearing, it will be plenty. Now, if you are going to be painting them with helmets on, you don't need to worry too much about this. Um, I have gone ahead and left her head separate so that when it comes time to painting the skin, it's a little easier to reach that. But helmets, it won't matter. Now, once I've uh, assembled her in this manner, what I've done is take her outside and hit her first of all. If I tilt her up like this, you'll see... I've hit it with a black primer, and then, sitting her upright at about a 45 degree angle, I've sprayed from above a couple of times with a white primer, and I've used white and black from the Army Painter for that. Now, you'll notice there is very little bit of uh, shading and what have you as a result of that. On this specific miniature, um, you'll probably not notice it all that much, uh, but it is good practice, particularly for the rest of the Army, and you'll see right at the back, some of the folds in the cape, that will work pretty well. Now just in order that I don't forget, I am going to start by painting in her skin. I'm going to use here Gilliman Flesh. Uh, there isn't really a correct color for this. But a quick blast of this over the skin. Trying to avoid the circlet on her head there. Uh, you'll see I'm knocking the camera around a little bit more than usual today because I have moved all of my setup again. So uh, bear with me if things get a little bit rocky. Now while the head dries off to the side, we can concentrate on the body. Now just like usually, we are going to paint from the lowest areas, or at least the places where we're most likely to make a mess. So I'm going to start with the Blood Angels Red. And uh, I've loaded up my brush. This is a size 2 from Vallejo. And uh, I'm going to very carefully sort of swipe down behind the legs as much as possible. And anywhere that it starts getting a bit complex, just take your time. Try and keep your brush moving in the same direction. It's really difficult to show you this on camera, unfortunately. Uh, but that's kind of the trick, is that you want to be able to move her upside down. You know, you are manipulating an object in 3D space. So if you find it difficult to reach from one direction, move the miniature. Um, I see people all the time holding a figure upright, up and down, and they just will not move it around. And it's, it's an odd one, but sometimes it 
doesn't hurt to be reminded that you can shift things. Now despite my best efforts, you'll see on her right ankle there, there's a little bit of a little bit of a red blip. Save your tidy up stage till last though, because I am probably going to make another couple of mistakes as we go. So no point cracking out the white paint now. What we'll turn to now is Gore Grunter Fur. Now, this one you want to be pretty careful with. We're going to paint in some of the uh, leather details with Gore Grunter Fur. Go straight over any buckles or anything like that, because if you want to, you can touch them up later with a little bit of silver. Uh, but if you don't want to, then just doing them brown now means they won't glow when our miniature is finished. So there isn't very much of this, but it is a detail which will stand out if you miss it. Now for her grip on the sword here, you could use a leather color or a red that's going to show up at some point, but I'm using here this is Murder Seam from the Army Painter. I'm using this for a couple of reasons. First of all, it is a wonderful deep dark purple. Uh, really, really good for uh, bits like this or for purity seals. You know, if you're painting Space Marines and you want a dark purple uh, one coat sort of solution for those, works very well there. And the other reason, I really like saying murder scene. Now while we're working in that sort of region, let's get a look at the purity seals. Now for the parchment, you could use something like Skeleton Horde, but what I'm using here, this is Bony Matter from the Army Painter. Um, I like this one because it's a little less rich. Uh, Skeleton Horde's a bit yellow, whereas once this dries, uh, I tend to find Bony Matter, it does look more parchmenty. So that's what I'm going to use for this. Now meanwhile, for the wax on those purity seals, um, you could as easily use, again, one of the reds you already have, but I'm going to use Flesh Terror's red because I want a slight difference between uh, these and the cape itself. So this is going to look proper meaty and awful. Just wonderful. And the camera moves again. Now, if you're like me and you're a bit of a silly billy, you may have inadvertently ended up painting some bits which you want to be gold with a different color. So what I've got here is Retributor Armor. Now I could do all of the gold using this, uh, but instead what I'm going to do is just this bit on the sword here, and I'm also going to do the circlet uh, on the sister's head with this, because I want to show you uh, something else for some of the other gold details. And now the actual gold color that I wanted to use, this is Hoplite Gold. Uh, this one is an Army Painter Speed Paint. And I say that with such an odd inflection because speed paint metallics are something which still throw me a little bit, uh, but they work super well as a base coat. So I'm going to put this down over most of the gold details, uh, starting with some of the little dealy boppers and doublers that she's carrying. Uh, this works best over a white. Uh, this is a pretty good spot to show off some of that gold. Uh, how much of this you add is up to you, of course. The same as any gold detailing on a sister. Um, but yeah, this, it looks a little more like Liberator Gold. I think it's the closest comparison here. Uh, but once it is shaded, it's going to be a little bit warmer. So over all of the gold bits I want with this stuff now. Now I've got Broadsword Silver. And this is another of the uh, Speed Paint Metallics here. So same principle applies. We're just going to very carefully apply this where we want a silver look to things. Now I'm never 100% certain how that's going to look as it goes on, but once it dries, it's actually pretty neat. What I'm going to do now is a couple of different black contrasts uh, for the black details. We'll start off with Black Templar, and I'm going to use this on the sleeves and her cape. So starting with the sleeves, I'm going to use this uh, with my medium layer brush. And then when it comes time to do her cape, I am going to swap up to something larger, probably that uh, size two brush from earlier. Now for the cape, yeah, a larger brush is going to help me apply this a lot more smoothly. This does look a little more patchy on the camera than it does in reality, but it will be a bit patchy in some areas, particularly on the cape. Don't worry about that though, because we're not finished. 
we're going to turn next to Black Legion. And this is the contrast color that covers almost like a, uh, like a traditional acrylic. So what I'm going to use this for is hard areas that I want to be very, very solid black. Uh, the scabbard for a start, and I'm also going to use it to paint the uh, casing on his plasma pistol. You might notice I also remembered at last to paint her gloves, and I did that with the Black Templar. Now I'm going to use Ethermatic Blue here to bop in the plasma gun. Um, there isn't really a right answer here. Some folks like uh, a very bright red. Um, I like Ethermatic Blue because plasma, um, I know technically should be a copper coil, you know, if we're talking about reality, but we're not talking about reality. We're talking about cool space guns. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to use, this is Plate Mail Metal from the Army Painter. And here comes the fun part. Dotting in some of these little buttons and what have you in her cape. Ah, this can take a while. Now, don't worry too much. If you do make a mistake here, instead of having to go back to the contrast, uh, you can just jam on a little bit of black around the, the overflow or the blip that you've made. It won't matter too much. It's not going to stand out. Now I've got some matte white, and now I'm going to try and get some of those little bits and pieces where I've gone a wee bit too keen with some of my contrast. Now inevitably these are not going to match up perfectly with uh, the primer, uh, but I am using matte white because of the fact that it has a very similar uh, property, like the surface of it is going to be quite close to the primer itself, and I think I actually fluked it, and that's all the tidy up I need to do. Cool. Now finally comes the fun part. We're going to shade the entire miniature with what I've always called marine juice. Now this is a mix. This is equal parts of Dark Tone from the Army Painter, Reichland Flesh Shade from Citadel, and Lamian Medium from Citadel as well. If you ever find that you're not getting quite the right result, or this is pooling a little too heavily, it's too sticky, just add another drop or two of Lamian Medium and you will be golden. Now going on, this will look dreadful, um, and I've come to accept that, but as always, you need to trust the process. So apply a fairly generous amount of this over everything, making sure that you are working it into the recesses. Now this being relatively pale once it dries um, is going to work really well to give us a sort of lived-in white for our armor, uh, but that little bit of warmth that the Reichland Flesh Shade gives is also going to mean that it works over pretty much everything else. So, like I said, entire miniature. And give this a bath. <laughs> Once it's applied, give it about half an hour to dry. Now, Once that has done drying, what you'll have is something that looks like this. And that's a winner. You know, <laughs> The armor is still very clearly white. Despite the fact it's not as clean as it was when we first started, we've got plenty of shading, and the addition of the medium means that it doesn't stain the armor all that much. Um, again, if you do want to tweak that a little bit, just add some more medium, and you'll get an even you know, less brown finish. But I think that works quite well. Now, speaking of a little bit more, I have here a dark tone again. Now, this is neat, straight from the pot, and we're going to apply this, ha-ha, uh, over... <laughs> The, uh, the black cape and gloves. Now while that is drying, you can actually spend a little bit of time highlighting any bits of white that you might want to. Um, I particularly recommend the edges of the knees here because they're nice and quick to pick out. Uh, same too on the uh, shoulder pads, just a wee bit of white there. You don't have to do a huge amount of this, uh, but it will look quite cool where you do. Now the last thing to do on the body here, I've mixed up two parts of Liberator Gold with one part Stormhost Silver to give us a really sharp, just off silver, to highlight some of the gold with. Just a few little dots of this will add a bunch to your gold. Now the last thing to do is going to be to reassemble her, but I'm going to do that after varnishing. Now I am going to use a matte varnish, uh, mostly because it photographs slightly better, it'll show up better on camera. But I do recommend if you are going to be painting power armor, then a satin varnish, something like Munitorum varnish or similar, is probably going to look a little bit better on the table. 
All the same, I'm going to matte and varnish her. Let's get a look at what she looks like when she's all finished. And so, there at last, our palatine is complete. Now, full disclosure, I did cheat a little bit. You'll probably see as her face comes around, I did add a little bit extra there. Um, I got out some Flayed One Flesh, some Pallid Witch Flesh, and I did paint in her eyes, and just a little dab of Caribou Crimson on her bottom lip, because I couldn't help myself, and uh, I had done it before I realized I wasn't recording. So, whoopsie doodle, but yeah, it's nice and quick, and I've done painting faces and that in other videos, so if you are bereft, <laughs> you need to figure out how I've done that, don't worry, there are others where you'll see that happen. So, thanks for sticking around. If you have done, uh, maybe you've seen something new, a new technique, or maybe these uh, metallic speed paints are something which might have given you a bit of a surprise. I have found them quite interesting while I've been using them as well, so I did want to give them a shot on a character, which I simply haven't done before. And I think the end result, yeah, that's cool. Uh, this was much quicker than the previous way that I had done the uh, Sacred Rose color scheme, the white armor and what have you. So, yeah, I think even having done something I've already done before, um, I learned one or two things along the way. So, always worth taking the time to experiment and to revisit old ideas. So, thank you very much on that subject to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Uh, genuinely, folks, without your support, this channel would not be going. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So, thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.